Well, ball is another tool we have for ministry. A lot of these guys on the court tonight were saved and delivered on the street, and basketball was used as a tool, tool to lure them in here. And once they got in here, we would play ball, and we would make a, um, a little gesture at the beginning of the game. Whoever wins, you know, the other group has to sit down and talk. We let, listen to what we say. And through that, God allowed us to minister to so many young people, man. A lot of these guys came from broken homes. Um, I count six or seven of them on court now. Uh, Ex-offenders, ex-drug dealers. One brother here just got out of rehab and doing great, man. And God is just really using basketball with us as another tool of ministering. Paul speaks of becoming all things. And this is one thing that the Lord has given us. And, you know, we might be fat and overweight gospel singers, but we can run that ball. No? And God has allowed it to just really, really be a blessing, not just with this age. Last week we had a camp with ages 5 to 12. We had a quite a many kids in here and you know we got to minister to them for three days by using basketball and, and it really worked. So many wise and community centers you know are not open to our kids and you know it's not for us to complain about it we've got to go out and do something about it so we've used this Y as a tool to get to the young people this particular YMCA you know they had basketball um, for several years and you know we were able to come in and buy uniforms for the kids and not just that so many other things uh friday last week we took all of them out to lunch and you know christmas we were able to bless 40 families with food and toys and gifts it was it's just another avenue you know and this is why has been very very helpful as far as giving us avenues for young people to find young people to bless So who are some of the people you admire on the basketball court? I notice you I notice you don't play much defense, but uh, we see you out there. Um, I'm a, my, Michael Jordan's my boy. I'm challenging him now. Now, I like Mike. Um, I guess Mike's everybody's boy, but, you know, he, Mike don't have the sweetness that I have. You know, I'm annoying that. Plus, I got the sweetness, you know. So, you know, we, we're going to work with my Fred Hammond. Is it the shoes? It must be the shoes. It's the shoes. It's right must there. Be the it's them. It's them. You know, and... Uh, Ben Tankard and so many other gospel artists have challenged us, and we took them like it was nothing. Ben, I took you, you remember? We, we, you know, we're working on take six. They're a little scared of us right now, so we're praying for them that God's give, God gives them strength, you know, that they can bring it on. <laughs> sounds, like, sounds like a GBA, a Gospel Basketball you know, Association. what's up? You know, Me and you're going to hook that up, too. Yeah. All right. We've got some sponsors now for several programs that we're getting ready to do. We've got Operation Night Court, which is basketball, late night, Friday night, Saturday night that lets the young people come off the street and play ball. But before they play ball, they have to go to class. What class? Bible class. So it's really happening. My new album, um, solo album I'm working on real, real hard. I'm, I'm really enjoying it because I want to come from another vein, but keep it in the stream. Um, we're, we're talking about issues that people normally don't talk about. Um, uh, sex and violence in the street, there is a solution, and that solution is Jesus Christ, and somebody is going to have to address those issues, and we go to church and we shout on top of it, no, we're going to have to remove the rug, and I was sharing with some people not too long ago, and we were talking about the very thing that we want to hide is what God wants to expose, that we might be delivered and set free, so I'm excited about it.
Come on, put those hands together. Let's love the Lord. Anyway. He's worthy right now, right now, right now. Somebody said you weren't going to make it. But by faith, we're all here tonight. Hallelujah. I know we're downtown and some of you look well. You should have come to give God some praise. Those of you that don't mind and recognize where your strength comes from. Lift that arm up one more time and just say thank you, Jesus. Why don't you put them together again and love him some more? He's worthy in here. Thank you, Jesus. David didn't say make a pretty noise. He said make a joyful noise. I wish we all could just say it real sweet. I feel like I feel like Let the devil know you're going on in the house. Regardless to the obstacle, the circumstance, I'm going to press my way. Somebody has a burden of trouble tonight. You can get bold. Get on your feet and say, come on. Everybody don't have to do it, but if you really want the devil to know you're going on, I feel like pressing my way. Thank you, Jesus. Pressing my way. One time and say, everybody, come on. I don't really think about our ratings, you know. I think about the words. You know, what is it saying? Is it positive? Can I hear what he's saying and be edified or strengthened to go on a little longer? You know, I don't really care about the ratings because you can have high ratings and sing your way to hell. You know, because plenty of them songs I heard when I was growing up, they had me, you, they think you're in church shouting and you be crying because they done made you feel so bad. You just, you can't do nothing but cry. In my heart, I believe John is a true, what you call it, quartetsman. <laughs> John is real, he'll kill quartet band. I think so, you know. Um, but I feel like this too, you know, when you was in the club, you know, you, you was giving it all you got. You know, come out smelling like smoke and everything, yeah. You know, and you dance all night. Even if you didn't want to dance, you dance till you get a stitch in your side. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know they, they would have those continual mixes where they wouldn't stop, you know? <laughs> and I just feel like if you could can allot so much time out to do something negative and give so much energy in it that you could do the same for Jesus and allow people to know that being a Christian doesn't mean that you have to be all oh, dried up, Lord, I'm climbing the rough side of the mountain trying to make it home. You know, it ain't like that. You know, I, if, if, if my father is a king, that means I'm supposed to look good, feel good, you know, be energetic. Jesus was rich, you know, rich. And, you know, I just feel like he had everything. You know, he can renew my strength daily. You know, so why am I supposed to be looking dried up and, you know, burnt burn, burn out and bags under my eyes like I'm up all night worrying about a situation or I've been praying all night, you know, cause, cause Jesus ain't came through. John is this type of person. He does not, he feels that in, in, in most of the uh, performers that we've heard that crossed over, somehow in their contracts, they had to compromise the name of Jesus. And if, unless someone, unless the Lord touches someone in that, in that particular part of the in industry where you cross over and allow them to know that I'm still God and I want my name to be magnified, we're not going to do it, you know, because we want, to know the we want the people to know who we're singing about. You know, you can say you love anybody, but who do you love? You know? Now put those hands together and love him in here. Let's do it, Nisha. Come on.
there are so many wonderful testimonies I could share tonight about people in this city that have been a blessing to us. And so many things that I went through early on and didn't really get a chance to share with mom and dad and thought I was grown young people and I strayed away a little bit. Last night while in a restaurant, a situation was brought up. I remember one time doing drugs, I needed something to eat. Left the church I was playing for and pretended to be that that I was not. Remember not having any shoes on one night and a man named Mr. Hall and his wife came to me and they said, John, God has something special for your life, but you gotta get your act together. There are those that said I was crazy for doing the video at home because people say, why pay $10 and we can go see that for free. <coughs> but I did it here for a reason because this is where God saved me. This is where God delivered me. I'm excited about my deliverance. There were those who said last week, you're crazy. You won't be able to pay for the building and all of your expenses. I wasn't concerned about people coming pay for my building myself before they even got here. I just wanted to have some church at home. Y'all ain't saying We have church all over the world and I gonna have some church here. Mr. and Mrs. Hall, somebody said that you were in the building and wherever you are, I just want you to stand now. There they are right there. I want you to know I love you and I he swept some parking lots and got me $20. He, he used to touch my heart in a special way. And last night when we went into his restaurant, I let him know I didn't forget it. I never forget it. That's right. We can't sing Never Shall Forget because we're supposed to do some more songs. But I like that song because the Bible says yes. that the sinner shall return to hell and all the nations that forget God. Yes. That's right. That's right. Look at your neighbor and say, I'll never forget what God has done for me. Those in minute, put your hands together now. Yeah. Nah, not yet. What do I do? Last Sunday night, I had the opportunity to go and sit down with my brother. And we had a conversation that touched my life. Fredell is the oldest of us, and went to visit him. The doctor says he has cancer. I went by as a brother and a preacher to encourage him. Man. Some kind of anointed way, God turned that thing around. Well, I will tell you, I've been talking about you all week because he said something to me. He said, you know, they sent a psychotherapist in my room. He said that the therapist said, we want to let you know you have X amount of days to live. He 
He told me, he told the therapist, wait a minute. I know they pay you to come in here and tell me this. So since they pay you, you shut up and listen to me. He told me that. No man, no doctor with a uniform could tell him how long he was going to live because his life belonged to Jesus. Hallelujah. I got so filled up in my spirit. I didn't want him to see me cry, but you know, I couldn't hold that thing and I don't care how tough you try to be when it comes down to family and the love you have. Every now and then you have to shed a few. But Trinell, I want you just to stand up because you're a walking miracle to me. And I want y'all to give hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This song simply says, regardless to your manner of disease or what the doctor says you have, how many know the Lord Jesus can give you a brand new life? Hallelujah right now. Thank you, Jesus. New life. I got another one. How many got another chance? God will give you a new life. your own deliverance, a brand new life. Hallelujah. Those that are not ashamed, you ought to say it with us. Open your mouth one time and just say it. New life. New life. New life. New life. New life. Jesus. Let's go, Missy. Listen to this song. We all sing this together. Come on. New life. New life. New life. New life. New life. He's given us new life. Say, my life is in Jesus' hands. Anything at all, I rest in His command. One more time. The Lord has given us, yes, He has.
Thank you, Lord. How many glad about it? The Lord has saved you. You got a new life. The God has delivered you. You got a new life. Somebody going through a trial, step right out into victory. You got a new life. I just need three people to jump up and say thank you. Oh, Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Give me some water while they're praising. Thank you, Jesus. I recognize that regardless of what comes my way, I can make it while sharing in these streets. You that live here in town, so many people think we've moved and stay on the road. No, I travel on the weekends. During the week, I'm back on those same street corners where God delivered me from. The other night, we were trying to think of somewhere to minister to touch some lives. Guess where I went? Took my bus, slapped up in the club, parked it right on the parking lot. Got out and while they were coming out staggering, we were able to tell them that Jesus loves you. Somebody said, well, you don't need to park your bus on the lot tell you about me and people. All right, all right. I didn't begin to receive my blessing until I began to please God. That's right. Don't worry so much about what people think of you. Right. They don't pay your bills. I'm telling you, I've been trying to wait on them to pay mine for a long time. They won't do it. Use that energy to give God some praise and do what he tells you to do. Amen. Christmas was wonderful for us not in our receiving and this was a good Christmas for me Amen. but more than anything we were able to go out and we added up everything we were able to feed over 40 families Amen. I didn't send them yeah. we went into some of our hardcore areas and, oh I enjoyed it I really did I went into one home and there was a lady who said I'll receive your gifts but I don't believe in Jesus don't believe in your type of worship. I'm, I'm the people who knock on your door on Saturday morning and wake you up and tell you, take this for 10 cents. And I thought about all those mornings they woke me up before I got saved. And I say, before I leave here, I'm going to get on her nerves like they used to get on my nerves. Hey. Yeah, I did. We blessed her financially and Amen. her children. We blessed them. And she thought she was going to put us out. I said, oh, no. We got some more business here. You got my money? I can stay a few minutes. I paid for this time. We're in a real rough area of the city. I told them we don't need no security. Everybody came in the house we join hands. Amen. And I begin to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Lord, this lady is standing here with a disease. Her church members won't come and see her. So I'm going to take advantage of this time of fellowship. Yeah. Let her know if nobody else knocks on her door you're able to knock on the door and enter the heart. Y'all know before I left there, I had her saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That was a Christmas present for me. One sister, we went in her house and when we broke in the door, she was standing in the kitchen. 
fixing potato sack. Eggs all on her hand. Reached out, shook my hand, put eggs on my hand. I said, thank you for the eggs. I said, I know you. She said, no, you don't. I said, oh, yes, I do. I know you. She said, no, you don't. I said, we used to go to club a long time ago. I remember your face. Look at how stays for having that. No, you don't. After we gave her the money, she said, well, I believe I do remember. I tell all of you here, our city's in trouble. The solution is not Channel 3, Channel 9. That's right. The solution is, it's not the jail cell. Amen. Behind me tonight and behind me even in the other group, there's been some drug dealing, there's been some prostitution. That's right. Come on, sir. February 1st, we open doors to a building where we're going to stop traveling so much and preach the gospel. Amen. Listen. I don't want elite members. I don't care about the deep ones that don't want to praise God. All right. Give me the prostitutes, the drug dealers, those that nobody want to be bothered with. All right. I've got a word for them. The same God that delivered me can deliver them. Right. You in this city, we can make the difference. Don't just shout, testify for 45 minutes in church. Uh -huh. Take that same 45 minute testimony, take it down on the square. Yeah. Just stand right up at the bus stop and start. First, give it another go. Somebody will listen, huh? Look at somebody and say, you can make it. Oh, they didn't hear you. Point your finger at them. You can make it. Come on, Dr. Lowell. Come on, Lowell. Listen. Somewhere in to encourage you
Sit down, we're gonna sing that no more. Ah, we're moving now. I like that song. What inspires me to write songs and when am I most in inspired? I'm inspired a lot uh, by God's word and uh, not to be corny or deep, it's just a fact. So many times we look for things to motivate us or to encourage us to write material and uh, the greatest stories ever told uh, are in the word of God and that's the prophetic, that's the positive message of today of deliverance that young people need to hear. So. Um, a lot of our music has uh, been said to be encouraging to the soul, and that's important to me, that it encourages. Um, I'm inspired after everybody's asleep. I'm a night person. I stay up until I see the sun and then go to sleep. Uh, in my home, I can um, trigger so I'll never know what time it is. I can pull the shutters, and it's nighttime for me at 1 a.m., I mean 1 p.m., so um, I'm inspired in the nighttime, and uh, God speaks to my heart then, um, as far as my writings are concerned. I know you. Anybody can praise him, but you know that true worshipers have to know him, huh? How many really know him in here? Put those hands together and praise the Lord. Here we go. I can 
just get through. I can just get through. I can just get through. Yeah, yeah. You're the perfect reason for the joy in my life. I'll do more than just a lie. I'm going to shout it, shout it from the mountains just to know you are who. So glad I know you. Never leave me alone. Hallelujah, Jesus. So glad I know all you. Don't you know, know I'm glad I know you. I worship and adore your holy name. Supplier of my needs. Hallelujah. Lord, I love you. So glad I love, I love you. I worship and adore your holy name. Hey. I worship and adore your holy name. I will worship and adore your holy name. How many know in the night? If you're willing to worship it, get on your feet and say it. I know you. Get up with a sincere heart tonight. And let's worship the Lord and just say, I know you, Jesus. Everybody say it tonight. Mean it for me. Come on, say it. I, I know you. I know you. 
more time, everybody. Come on. some of that good praise. Come on. Oh, make some noise in here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, look those hands up. He's worthy. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Oh, bless him, man. So, thank you. We praise your Lord Jesus. Yes. Let's do it the old time. Please. I want this segment over here to be hallelujah. I want the segment in the middle to be thank you, Jesus. I want the segment over here to be oh, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Now, when I point to you, I want you to represent your section. Your name is Hallelujah. Your name is Thank You, Jesus. Your name is. Let's make some noise in here. You ready? Come on. It's very important that anybody who ministers knows that um, you've got to study God's word. Um, if we're going to stand and profess Christ and uh, we confess him, we possess him, um, we've got to know his will. And the only way to know his will is to be in his word. And, you know, we all so many times... You know, I hear people testify of the great beyond and where we're going. I want people to know that Jesus is here. Jesus is here, you know, and we can share heaven here. I mean, and, and, and I don't want to sound um, crazy, but it's a fact. I want people to know that the blessings of the Lord, we can share them today. So many people want to wait until uh, over yonder. No, I'll take mine now. You know, the promise is mine. I know that. But I can also receive God's blessings right now. And that encourages my heart, you know, daily to know that um, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. And every promise that he promises us, you know, it's ours. You know, faith is not next week. It's now. The scripture says now faith is the substance. It's yours now. Don't give up on God. Amen. For the Bible declares that God is not a man that he should lie. That's right. I don't care what your cousin said. I don't care what the prophet said. Right. Right. If God said it, look at somebody and say, that settles it. Come on, let's walk by faith in here. Come on. Come on, Nessa. I'm oh. 
Isabella Armstrong, y'all give her another hand. Come on here. Yes, sir. Sit down again. We almost. Look at somebody and say, I'm enjoying myself. Yes, yes, yes. Sheila sings a little song. Oh, yes. song simply says, he's able. How many know he's able in here? Let's receive her. Put your hands together and show us some love.
got some praise in here. Oh, bless the Lord now. How many nights were there? Oh. Right now and all the time. He's able. Oh. I don't care what you're going through. I've got an able attitude. Yeah, he's able all the time. Somebody don't believe me. So lean on that person and say, I know he's able. Because he did it for me. Put those hands together one more time. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just say this with me, everybody. Listen. I know he's able. Everybody. I know he's able. Share with me, everybody. Say. Come on out here with me, Sheila. I know his name is Yes, he is. You're done. Say with me, say with me, I know he 
Hi, I'm Vanessa Bell Armstrong. I'm Angelo. And I'm Veronica. Congratulations, Congratulations for being, being number, number one, John. John. Hi, I'm Mark Williams, Chief Engineer at Reflection Studios in Charlotte. And uh, all of us here want to congratulate you, John. Number one, Billboard Charts. Congratulations. When asked what's John's favorite hobby, after playing basketball, I collect figurines. Most of the pieces in both houses are retired. So my birthday is June the 4th. So remember me. Figurines. <laughs> Hi, my name is Renee McGriff of the New Life Community Choir. I sing alto. And I'd like to say congratulations, John, for being number one. Hi, my name is Lowell. And my name is Lamont. And we're in the tennis section of the New Life Community Choir. And we just like to say congratulations, congratulations John, John, for being number one. I'm one of John's older brothers. And, and uh, he, uh, to me, he's, he, he's, he's more like a son than, than a brother. And uh, John Prince, he and I, we have always had a close relationship. More so like a father son than than two brothers. And I, I remember when he first started off in his music, when he was very young, he used to he used to, uh, so called writing. Uh, he would write music, and uh, he would call me, "Come on, Trader, come on, Trader, uh, listen at this, listen at this." And he'd get on the piano, he'd be banging and singing. It'd be sounding terrible, hey, most of the time. <laughs> well, I said, well, John Prince, that's good, that's good. I said, keep on, that's good, that's good, that's good. And he would always, uh, 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 about, two, about two or three times a week, he would, uh, he would always have uh, a little song that he done, he done wrote. And uh, what really amazed, what, what really was amazing, his songs, they was always Christian songs, you know. Uh, uh, from the time when he fr first could crawl up on the piano stool, he always played uh, a religious song. And uh, I knew then, I didn't have to worry about it. I said, because uh, uh, when you miss him, uh, he sung, he could be at, at somebody's piano in somebody's church or something. And uh, you don't have to worry about it. I never, had, I never worried about John Prince running around with a gang because all his, all his spare time, uh, he was at a piano. Somewhere, uh, some at the house at the piano, playing Christian song, he was up at the church playing. What do you think about your brother being number one on, on Billboard? I like it. I like it. It, it makes me feel good. Because uh, uh, I know the way I prayed for him and uh, the way I worked to help him, you know, to get there. And uh, it, it, really, it, really, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel real good. So and uh, feel good too when you see him on Bobby Jones every yeah, other Sunday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I when I see him on TV on anybody show, it make, make me feel good. And uh, uh, I look at him, and uh, uh, I'm just so glad that uh, uh, I look at him. Uh, he's for real. He's God. You know, he's God. He's not up there for an outside show. And uh, uh, and I, I, I and he, I look at him. You don't find too many young people to uh, give their Christ, give their uh, uh, life to Christ. You know, I just look at them. And I, I say, look, I say, my, uh, uh, I say, my life, destiny, is in God's hand. 
and uh, John Prince and I, <laughs> you know, we talked, we laughed about it, we talked about it, and uh, and he said, look at was that trade? I said, you know, you know, you know, you got a point there. So you got a point there, you know, and I just hope that uh, uh, not only John Prince, my other sisters and brothers, you know, that and all of them they come to me, you know, they uh, in a way some like uh, like, like Daddy now they come to me, ask me about things like that, and. Uh, I try to be a, a help to him, at least one thing, I'm honest with him. And, uh, you know, and, and uh, John Prince and the rest of them, uh, you know, I hope they, hope they uh, continue to listen to me and, uh, and, and take, take, take the things, what I, what I tell them, take them in stride and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and get closer to, closer to Christ. You know, that's about the best you can do because Christ is the answer. And uh, John Prince, I'm, I'm very, like I said, I'm very, very proud of him. Uh, the work he do in the community, the work he do all over. I have been, uh, okay, I used to be, I was, I was a long distance truck driver. And uh, I've been across Texas, California, up Seattle, Washington. And uh, uh, people talk about the good work that John Prince is doing. You know, it, it, it really make me feel good. It really make me feel good. And uh, I hope God give him strength to continue. To, to, to continue here.